In this lecture, I'm going to go through the basic design relationship and the strength design method as well. Uh, that is extensively used in the analysis and design of reinforced concrete structures. The basic design relationship goes something like this. That is, the load effect is less than the resistance. Now, what is this load effect and what is this resistance? This load effect comes from the load. This is due to the applied loads. And this resistance over here is provided by the material. That is, in case of reinforced concrete, it is steel and concrete together. To understand this load effect, consider a simply supported beam subjected to a UDL. And because of this load, shear force and banding movement will be induced all along the length of the member. So if I draw the shear force diagram, it will be something like this. And the banding movement diagram will be maximum here and decreasing towards the support. So this here is the bending load effect. And this over here is the shear load effect. Similarly, we can have the axial load effect as well as torsional load effect. To understand this, let's uh, take a cross section of a member. So we have a member here and a cross section here, and there are three mutually perpendicular axes, X, Y, and Z. If the moment is produced about X axis, it would cause bending of this member, and this would come under a bending load effect. And let's represent this moment as M. And if the moment is produced along Z axis, that is about the longitudinal axis of the member, this would cause twisting of the cross section of the member and let's represent it by T. And if the produced forces along Y axis in the vertical direction, uh, this would be shear force as it is parallel to the surface. Similarly, if the force acts uh, perpendicular to the cross section and is along the Z axis, uh, this would be axial force represented by P. So if I write this basic design relationship in terms of flexure, uh, it would be something like this mu is less than or equal to phi mn. Similarly for shear and axial as well as torsion. So on the left hand side you have different load effects. This is the bending load effect, shear load effect, axial load effect and torsional load effect. And on the right hand side you have the resistance provided by the cross section. And if all of these equations are satisfied, that is the load effect is less than or equal to resistance in flexure, shear, uh, axial and torsion. It means that the section has adequate strength. It is safe strength wise. So if I write. And the first equation here is related to flexure analysis and design. So the first equation is related to flexure analysis and design. Similarly, the second one is related to shear analysis and design and this one to axial and this one to torsion. The difference between analysis and design of reinforced concrete members is that in analysis, dimensions and reinforcement details are given. Also the material properties such as FC prime and FY, that is the uh, compressive strength of concrete and yield strength of steel uh, are also known. And in the case of design, we have to start from scratch. We don't know the width of the section, the height of the section, that is the dimensions of the section, as well as the area of steel. And we have to start from scratch. So if I summarize it, in analysis problem, material quantities, that is the dimensions of the cross section and the area of steel, as well as the material properties, that is FC prime and FY are known, then it's an analysis problem. However, if the material properties and material quantities are unknown, you don't know the value of uh, the dimensions as well as the area of steel and the material properties, that is FC prime and FY, that's a designing problem. And if I specifically talk about the difference between the flexural analysis and design, uh, in flexural analysis we have to compute MU as well as phi MN. MU can be computed from 
uh, by performing uh, structural analysis or using law of statics and Feynman uh, can be evaluated using this data given here. That is the cross-sectional properties and the material properties. And in flexural design, we first estimate the loads coming onto the beam and uh, determine the bending load effect. And on the basis of that bending load effect, we calculate the dimensions, that is P and H, as well as the area of steel. We uh, take material properties Fc prime and Fy in such a way that it could uh, resist that bending load effect. And in the end, our design should be such that it should satisfy the basic design relationship. That is Mu should be less than or equal to Phi Mn. And now let's talk about this equation in a bit more detail and try to understand each and every term involved in it. So Mu is less than or equal to Phi Mn. This Mu is also called the factored moment. And uh, on the left hand side we have to calculate this MU we need to apply uh, load factors and load combinations that are basically the safety provisions provided by the ACI code. And there are different types of load acting on the structure for instance dead load, live load, uh, dead load is a load coming from the sulfate of the structure or floor finishes whereas live load is any other load other than the dead load. Uh, for instance the load of the uh, the load that is coming from the weight of the people or goods or from nature or, or any other lateral load is called the live load. Comes under the category of live load. So let's assume for the sake of discussion that this moment for now is coming from uh, dead load plus the live load. And according to ACI code, we need to multiply these service moments uh, with certain factors that is load factors for dead load uh, is equal to 1.2 and for live load is equal to 1.6. So this here is the dead load overload factor and this one here is the live load factor. And these MD and ML are the moment coming from the service load that is those load which are not multiplied by any factor. And when we multiply them with a certain factor, they are called factored moment. So in this case, this is the factored moment, uh, factored dead load moment, and this is the factored live load moment. And in the end, if you sum it up, you will get your MU, which is the factored moment. So if you multiply a uh, different category of loading with their load factors and add them together, this overall, this whole thing, the summation is called the load combination. So according to ACI code, depending upon the load being applied on the structure, for instance, if the load uh, on the structure acting is dead load, live load and wind load, we have to utilize these combinations and these load factors and we have to pick uh, the load combination that gives us the maximum loading effect. And in case of dead load, live load and earthquake load, uh, we have to utilize these combinations and similarly we have to pick uh, that combination which gives us the maximum banding loading effect. Now let's talk about the right hand side of this basic design equation. So we have two things here, phi and mn. mn here is the nominal strength, nominal moment strength. And phi here is called the strength reduction factor. And when they are multiplied together, it's called the design moment strength. Or reduced nominal strength. In the next lecture, I'm going to discuss uh, the right-hand side of this equation in a bit more detail and we'll do certain problems related to uh, flexural analysis as well as design. Thanks for watching till the end and take care.